My name's uh, Jonathan Ward. I'm uh, Head of Research at Fetch AI. We're building a platform for the deployment of multi-agent systems. And one of the things we want to do is, in creating that environment, we want to build collective intelligence. And what I'm going to do today is just outline the kind of vision for Fetch and some of the, a couple of the mechanisms we're using to build these kind of decentralized collective intelligence. And one of the ways I'm going to talk about it is there are lots of analogies between the way um, human economies or human individuals build collective intelligence that we can actually apply to the digital domain. And I'm going to outline how we're going to do that. So uh, just to give a bit more background, we are actually a fully a fully integrated blockchain platform. So we are actually building a scalable, sharded blockchain with a new consensus algorithm. We intend its performance to be, um, you know, overcome some of the major issues with blockchain technology in terms of cost, in terms of efficiency, etc. And um, the main differentiating factor that we have with other existing protocols is that we have um, a platform for very high performance smart contract technology. Uh, and through that, that, that then facilitates all of the technology that the stack, which is involving the deployment of multi-agent systems, um, that, would, that, that we wish to facilitate. Okay? Um, so one way in which, so just to, just to clarify, so there's been some uh, debate about what the role of agents is with respect to data. Agents actually take steps in the world that modify the state of the world. So they actually act on your behalf and modify the state of the world. They are not static data. That is the key difference between, do, um, between an agent-based system and a decentralized, decentralized data marketplace. Okay, so what we know is that if the 20th century was characterized by Moore's law, the 21st century is really going to be dominated by edge-based computing. So these are ubiquitous network devices. And what we also know that all these devices, there'll be 20 billion of them deployed by 2020, are generating absolutely enormous amounts of data. And it's absolutely completely impractical to see any way of centralizing that data anytime soon. And most, the vast majority of it that goes through your smartphone or your uh, smart connected home is actually not stored or used in any way. So there's a huge opportunity for monetizing that, that source of data. So what we know is that obviously our mobile phones have become the kind of hub of our digital live and we use, lives and we use that to interact with other, other kind of um, elements of our lives which include cars, automotive and smart, smart homes. Uh, also facilitated by the cloud or the internet. However, there is a limitation to that. And if we take the limitation to, to the fully connected world is where you have a situation such, such as smart energy. So in this case, we might have um, solar panels or wind, wind turbines. And we might want to be able to share resources between different people. The issue that we have here, though, is that we have multiple stakeholders. So the connectivity and the network devices themselves don't provide the full solution to this, this problem. Okay. So there's an obvious solution to that, and um, this was one that was actually mentioned by Milton Friedman a full, almost a full decade before um, uh, the, uh, the development of Bitcoin was that, uh, the possibility of, um, through the internet, developing a reliable e-cash system. And he also anticipated it being decentralized and to some extent anonymous. So if we then uh, augment this picture with uh, the blockchain technology, which provides a means for financial exchange, we then have a huge amount of additional market mechanisms that can exist and, and greater, uh, greater potential for efficient allocation of resources. Okay, so as I said in the start of the talk, so what we're dealing with to a large extent is complex or distributed systems. So there's no feasible way of um, centralizing them and they involve multiple stakeholders. Now, as it turns out, this as a field of research has been studied for a very long time. And what you'll also uh, get from looking at this, these two definitions is that that actually uh, also covers blockchains themselves. So the fact that we're actually thinking of blockchain as a multi-agent system is one of the reasons why we have an advantage in terms of building a more efficient blockchain. Okay. So the question is, how do you build coll uh, decentralized collective intelligence? One way is by decentralized decision making. I'm not going to talk about that today, uh, but there is lots of ex examples of that on our website really interesting ones around cars and vehicles. The other element which I am going to d discuss in more detail is something called prediction marketplaces. And the idea here is, so there's definitely uh, analogies with how um, collective intelligence is built up in the human domain. So what I'm going to talk about here is 
um, an observation by Sir Francis Gal Galton around the 1900s, so he was probably the world's first data scientist, statistician, unfortunately eugenicist. And he was um, attending a farmer's market, and what he noticed was there was a competition going on where the, the, the goal of the competition was to guess the weight of the ox accurately. And what he actually found, to his enormous surprise, was that the average estimate from the crowd was extremely accurate, very, very close to the actual weight of the crowd. And that was totally against what he, he anticipated, because he anticipated that there was going to be some genius like him who was going to be able to do better than any, any collection aggregate of individuals. And what we actually see is that something like the efficient market hypothesis and the way stock exchanges exchange work, the reason it's so difficult to make money in these contexts is that they are actually aggregating the knowledge of many, many people. So um, the question then is, OK, so this can, this can work well for building collective intelligence. But there are definitely situations where this fails, right? So we, know, we all know situations where collections of people can behave much worse or much less cleverly than one, any individual. So the question is, is what, what are those different uh, components? Uh, and they've been summarized in this book, which I can strongly recommend. And those are that there needs to be a diversity of opinion, so there needs to be lots of people making a prediction. They need to be independent, so they're making their predictions independently of each other. Ideally, they need to be decentralized, so this means they need to be as diverse a group of people geographically separated. There needs to be a way of aggregating that information between all of those different um, agents. And they need to ha there needs to be some way of establishing trust. So this is a way of ensuring that they have confidence in the way that the system works and also ha having uh, limits on their behavior. So there is actually an analogy for this in machine learning. So what we know from machine learning algorithms um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but a fundamental problem that you face in machine learning is that if we want to fit a model, which in this case is, is modeled by the green line and we, we have some noisy data set, fundamental problem is solving the problem, is solving the trade-off between model complexity. So in one case, you can imagine having the yellow line, which is a model that's too simple, can't fully represent the data. In the other example, we, in the red case, we have a model that's actually fitting some of the noise. So it's, it's not going to generalize well because it's not representing the underlying trend in the data. It's just fitting some, some variation. So what we know is that if we take a very popular machine learning technique, this is a decision tree, which basically just splits the data set up using a very, very simple set of criteria. That is very, very prone to overfitting. However, if we aggregate the results from many, many, many instances of these prediction algorithms, what you actually find is that you get a much better algorithm. So all of the noise, all the fitting of the variance works out, and you end up with a very good uh, um, result. So what we actually find is if using analogies with uh, machine learning, there is diversity in, in, of opinion, independence, and decentralization. And what we know is that ensemble machine learning me methods already work better. So if we apply these, these techniques to the machine economy straight out of the box, we have a, a technique for aggregating information from many different sources. The only thing that we need to do as the platform is to supply the other two um, components, which are a means for aggregating the predictions and a way of assigning trust. And I'm just going to very briefly outline the, the techniques that we're using to do that. So obviously what we have is a decentralized network. There's an option for things like sovereign and I identity management. So there's a way of uh, maintaining reputation or some kind of persistent identity on the network, which is important. The other thing we can do is say, OK, well, we need to specify some kind of event that's of interest to people, which we want to make a prediction of and say, as an example, given that it's rained a lot today, is whether it rains tomorrow. And what we can then do via the Fetch platform is specify a smart contract. And what the smart contract can, for example, do is I can sell you for a dollar a pair of contracts A and B, and contract A pays a dollar if it rains tomorrow, and contract B pays a dollar if it doesn't. Now, if you buy both contracts, you've paid a dollar, and you basically got something that will pay you back a dollar. But once you have these pair of contracts, what you can then do is go in the market, and if you think it's definitely going to rain tomorrow, you're going to sell your... Um, your contract B, which says it's not going to rain. And in that way, you can specify a market for what's going to ha actually happen. 
And this is a way that people can go into the market and obtain predictions from multiple different devices, aggregate that, and uh, obtain a prediction that's of interest to them. So obviously, I don't have much time. So I'll just go through that. So obviously, we're an open source platform, really interested in getting people involved. There's lots of tools for developing the smart contracts, really expressive uh, smart contract technology. We had a major code release um, yesterday, uh, Project Andromeda, with lots of new functionality. Um, we also are providing lots of tools for actually building and deploying agents, which you can use to monetize different, different uh, resources or also operate on your behalf. Um, and with that, I'll just end with uh, some uh, further information and just a, a statement. If anybody's interested, we're very interested in hiring.